happy birthday to you. Very cool day, very grateful to be alive. We did a couple different videos. One was a complete surprise for me. Happy birthday, Brian. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I love you. Happy birthday, Brian. Happy birthday. Uh, the other one, we planned more. As I turned 35, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you all for being a part of this amazing, amazing journey. You know, when I saw the ball dropping in Times Square where I spent New Year's Eve, we have Uncle Thomas in the house from Washington, D.C. Since it's my birthday, I brought you guys presents. I'll tell the story after you've opened it. So, Thomas, why don't you tell the vlog what that says? My brother, in my case, it was four words that changed my life. Brian, it's Thomas Cook. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Who can't express the words, love. words can't express. Uh, words cannot express the gratitude, love, and admiration I have for you. You're the most generous spirit and thoughtful man I know. I love you, Brian. That's really wonderful. So the story here is, for those of you guys that don't know, one word that will change your life is the title of the book, right? And when Thomas called me, I was in the middle of a very crowded train and he said, Brian, you sound busy. I'm going to call you at 9 a.m. on Monday. You give me five minutes and I'll change your whole life. So when you said, Brian, it's Thomas Cook, that was the four words. That were the four. That was the four words. That were the four words. Those were the four words. Changed my life. So thank you, brother. Thanks thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. So I, well, something about me, guys, I never wrap presents ever. Even at Christmas, I just walked up to my mom and I hand her the thing. <laughs> And she's like, oh, you wrapped the present. So I have something else for you, but it's at the bottom of this. So first of all, since you're a California child, I thought I'd give you a nice, big, warm oh scarf. God. That's so funny. Because you need a scarf. I wanted one like this. I, I know. Saw one. Oh, my goodness. It's going to look great with your skin, too, yeah. Thank you. Did your girlfriend make it? Did my girlfriend make it? Leave it. Well, we'll talk about it later, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, don't you have to get coffee or something? Isn't there, isn't there a free mocha down the street? Oh, wow. That's yours. And then this is also yours. Merry Christmas. Oh. Happy birthday. Oh read a little. Po read, <coughs> I wrote a little note inside. Oh okay. I might need a little assistance. <laughs> my handwriting is so bad. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Every answer is inside of you. Plus, you are my favorite. I love you. Now go fly. Be. Santa hit me up on LinkedIn three years ago and said, I want an informational interview. I want to be a motivational speaker. I love what you're doing. Wait, wait, hold on. Can I add something? Add. I was like super despo, like really desperate. I was like, I'll come to you. If you can't do 15 minutes, I'll do 10. If you can't do 10, I'll do five. If you can't come to SAC, I'll come to San Francisco. I'll meet you wherever. Like I really wanted to meet yep. him. And uh, I said, I'm not, I, can't, I don't have time for an informational interview, but I can give you an internship. Because I looked on her LinkedIn and she had five speeches already made and she was like 19 or 20 or 22 or however old you were. And, and I was like, this girl has stuff up there. She's doing it. She's doing what she says she wants to do. So that's when, uh, that's, that's when it all started. San Francisco studio apartment. Yeah. So started the morning with an exciting jolt. Incredible organization I'm very proud of, very proud to be a part of and then came to the office for an incredible surprise, the happy birthday, the team, and then worked on Mr. Thomas Cook, who's running around right there. Thomas, wave to the camera, wave to the camera. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. That's what Thomas does. He sings happy birthday. We worked on his audio book today. It's going to be we incredible. We did amazing, Making amazing. it, coming out 2018. Um, and now we're here doing a little uh, 
just footage of my favorite place, Grand Central, heading to the Roosevelt Hotel, one of my favorite hotels, old school, traditional, very special place for drinks and hanging out, holiday party, birthday party with the team that we've had over the last eight, nine months. So just very excited about an exciting day. Coming to you live from Grand Central, coming to you live from 35 years of life. What's up? And uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Guys, I wanted to bring you all together tonight because for the last year, you guys have all been my life. And 35 today, and I think the thing that I'm most proud of as I reflect back to the last year is what we've all been able to do together. And the immense gratitude that I have for each and every single one of you that have put so much of your love and so much of your time and sweat and energy into this thing that we've built. It's been a cool journey, and I wanted to just kind of briefly highlight the thing that I love most about every single one of you that's sitting around this table. And obviously, uh, we're, well, we'll do the choice at the very end. How about that? Okay, here we go. There we go. Actually, we'll do a toast after every single person. Oh, all right? Yeah. So first of all, to Mr. Nick, Mr. Makita, Oscar, the thing I appreciate most about you is your honesty and your integrity in a time where it would have been really easy to not be honest and not be upfront, especially with the incident that we all experienced. For the newcomers, a couple of Oscar's friends broke into the WeWork kegs and got us into a lot of trouble almost. And Oscar came clean that it was his friends that he didn't know. And what did I ask you? I said, Oscar, I'm gonna look you in the eye and ask you one time, did you know about this or not? And you said, no, I did not. And I believed you because that's the personality that you have. And I think that for me, what was most fascinating about that whole experience is that what you don't know and what you guys don't know is every single one of the WeWork custodial staff went to bat for us because you were nice to them. Oscar is a good kid. They would all tell me that. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. The people that made the ultimate decisions made the decision because at the end of the day, he's a good guy and they gave us a second chance. So dude, you guys don't understand how important it is to be nice to every single person, even if they don't seem powerful, because at the end of the day, they do hold a lot of power. And I also admire your zest for learning and your commitment to getting better and better. By the end, your vlogs were on point, dude. I was sad to see you go, man. But um, that is something that I really respect about you. Your zest for learning, your desire to take charge of responsibility when it wasn't easy, and you didn't even have to do it. They would have just, they wouldn't have known it was you. So that's good. Those are good qualities, brother. Cheers. Mr. Hoffman. So you guys had just meet Thomas, right? You're just meeting Thomas? Oh, you worked together for one week. You guys just met Thomas, right? So many things to say about you. Um, I think the thing that, that, that really I admire most about you is how excited, not just willing, not just accommodating, but how excited you are to do anything and to help us in any way we can. I've never ever felt like someone was genuinely more excited to go get my lunch or my breakfast than you are. Literally, he's like, whatever, it, I'm ha the thing that you say over and over and over again is, I hope it is of use to you. And I think that you live your life with such a desire to be of service to people. It's an incredibly beautiful thing. You're a research monster. This guy can find like 100 conferences in like a day. He doesn't move from his seat for eight hours. He eats a flagel every morning, a protein bar every afternoon, drinks a nesty in water all day, goes to the bathroom like twice. It's incredible. Mr. Coca-Cola, I saw the birthday video today and you are hilarious, dude. You're like, keep going, keep grinding. You're the man. It was the funniest shit. You are such a young soul, but such an old soul at the same time. You're a bulldog. You're a bulldog. You're a competitor. You have a, you're gritty. 
you're you're gritty and you're no show but you get things done remember when we had that competition to see who could find me that, that the speaking thing in one day you got something one day and I think that you're a quirky guy and I love that about you I love it that I never knew what you were gonna say and the thing that amazed me most about the three or four months we had together your social awareness went through the roof by the end of the summer. Be money. The only person that would have beat you into the office was this guy. I remember getting into the office one day at like 7.30 and he was like in the common area on the computer doing the newsletter. And I'm like, Brian, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I always get here at this time. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. Your positivity, man, and your, the joy you brought to our office, I think is the word, joy. Everyone looked forward to having you around, including me. And that sparked a lot of creativity, and that sparked a lot of laughter. And when you were not around, we felt it. When you had to go to J. Crew, we were like, ah, you gotta go to J. Crew. Um, of course you're fabulous and stylish and amazing and you everyone comments on it. They're like, what's that stylish guy? Is he not working with you guys anymore? The thing that I admire the most about you, Brian, is that you're just so open to learning and so open to joy and you bring so much to the to the to the energy of the office. And I think that's gonna take you a really, really long way. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. So Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray is new to the team. He comes in once a week and rocks out creative. Um, I just, you know, it's funny, like with all of you, whether you were an intern or whether you've been a paid employee, I have never ever checked a reference. I've never really looked at your resume. I looked at your resume for a minute. I don't even think I asked for you guys' resume. I never once asked for your resume. I'm big on just instant energy. And the instant energy I got from you, man, was just super positive, super like awesome. We talked about the DR and you're Dominican. So basically you're already in, man. Um, but yeah, I think that I believe so much in surrounding yourself with good people. And just when you walk into the office, similar to like all of you, but we feel the spirits rise. And um, it's funny, you know, you say, I use this as my creative time to get really just focus in on something because everything else is so sales and and um, I don't know what it's going to be in the future but I just know that we're going to be working together again on stuff and so I don't know man I just even though it's been like a month or whatever it just it feels like I've known you for a really long time and I uh, just appreciate you man so thanks for being a part of it it's hard to put into words you know I, I met Santa three years ago and she wrote me an email and said I want to be a motivational speaker and I need an informational interview from you. <laughs> and I was like, who is this girl? And she hit me up cold on LinkedIn and I went to her page and I see this chipper little young woman that has five different motivational speeches up on her LinkedIn and one of them is about coffee. Yeah. And at that time I was obsessed with bulletproof coffee and I said, all right, this girl has five speeches and she's 21, 22 years old. She's doing things. And I said, I don't have time for an informational interview, but I do have an internship for the summer if you want to come to San Francisco. And we worked every single day out of my studio apartment <laughs> in San Francisco at the same desk, which was like half the size of this. We're literally, remember this? We're literally like this and uh, I just have I've just watched you grow and uh, for those of you that have had businesses or that will ever have a business the greatest feeling that you could ever experience when you have a business is to meet someone who cares about your business just as much as you do. And it's almost impossible to find. 
In fact, I tell people when I give speeches, don't expect it ever that anyone ever will care about your business as much as you do. It won't happen. And once in a while it does. Because you show me that. You have cared about our brand and our business more than I could ever imagine. And you have put everything that you have into it. Literally. Moving across the country, living with your aunts and fucking Yonkers, like everything. And one day we will share a stage. And one day when you're the next Oprah, bigger than Oprah, you're gonna just remember me. But to watch someone work day in and day out, as all of you have for over the course of a year in some capacity, but she has over the course of three years, to watch someone work day in and day out on your dream, it's literally impossible to explain what that feels like. You know what you mean to me. Every, like all these men around us know that you are the glue of the company and that you are the queen and that you have been my mentor and you have been my sounding board and you have been everything for three years, so thank you. When people ask me what is Thomas Cook like, and all of you have experienced Thomas Cook, you just got to know him, but everybody else has spent some time with Thomas in one way or another. I think the best way to explain Thomas Cook is he is an enigma and an anomaly to the world in general. I'm surrounded by a lot of really, really famous people, have a lot of money, have a lot of success, have a lot of power. And Thomas has all of that as well. The thing that sets you apart from all of them is that I've never in my life met anybody who gives every single thing that they can give and literally has zero, and when I say zero, and you guys all know this and know him, zero expectation of anything in return for me. It doesn't exist in this world. Everybody wants something back from you. Everybody. And for four years, three years, however long we've known each other, I feel like we've been doing our best to give to each other just because it's just in us. To Thomas. Brian is easily the best boss I've ever had. And honestly, like, why I like working for Brian so much, or just why I like knowing Brian is like how real he is. It's kind of, it's very refreshing, very straightforward, very polite. And like, unlike a lot of my other bosses, I couldn't, I couldn't feel like I could have a regular conversation with him, kind of that superiority thing. But with Brian, I always feel like, um, like we were level and like I could just talk to him like a friend. I learned a lot, I grew up a lot, and I learned to also never invite your friends to, a, to an office, <laughs> office drinking party. Um, actually, I don't have too much prepared. I didn't even know we were giving speeches tonight. But um, I definitely can agree with you. You are one of the best bosses I've ever met. And um, you really helped get my career and my life. I have a much new shot in the arm. And for all year, I've been working so hard. Last year, I did a um, shadow experience with NBC, as you know, and I thought, like, after that, I was going to get a Washington interview, nothing happened. And, like, your internship was really, like, the answer to my prayers. One that day, Sana, you were part of the answer to my prayers. You called me that day, and, like, you wanted, you were from Life Insurance, and I made the same mistake everyone makes. I thought you said Life Insurance, and then I looked it up, and I'm like, I never applied to a Life Insurance internship. <laughs> And then I went to the Marymount catalog, and I'm like, oh, life in shorts, that's it. And um, then we, so we met, when I met, we were impressed by my articles about Disney World, of course. I was impressed by your Mickey Mouse watch, <laughs> I still remember. Um, and then after you and I met, I raced home, I like rushed over my LinkedIn profile, I made sure everything was in really good order and everything. <laughs> and um, sure enough, you got hired. Um, my first, it's a great to be part of your birthday. My second day in your office was my 30th birthday. 
I couldn't have thought of a better way to be working on my birthday. And thank you for everything you taught me. We were in an office, where, like some people were walking around with a really nice Rolex or some Versace sweatpants. And, and this Brian only wanted to help um, <laughs> orphans in the Dominican Republic. And I was like, wow, this guy's like a really selfless guy. And then the third thing I admire is um, you brought like everyone here together. So yeah, that's like, you got like five Instagram posts out of that. <laughs> Somebody who had such a positive outlook on the world, like especially in the times we live in today, you know, you see all this bad news coming out, but you always had such like a positive view of everything. And that helped me gain a positive view on everything, which I try to also maintain. And just meeting him, I felt his energy before I got to know him personally. So I believe like everything in the world exists within a physical form and a spiritual form. And I felt like I met his spiritual form before his physical form, and his physical form complemented his spiritual form, if that makes any sense. Yeah. When I meet Brian, again, as everybody said, I'm taken aback by your energy, your positivity. But more than anything, what I noticed that day is that you embodied what people say life should be once you're working in your destiny or in your flow. You have this ability, literally, you're talking to your mother five minutes before a conversation with an executive at Google, and then you nail that conversation without any prep work because you're really living your truth. You know, you're living what you were born to do, and, and, and it's palpable. This man means so much to me, like so much. Oh, fuck, I feel the tears coming up already. <laughs> But when I first reached out to Brian for an informational interview three years ago, and he accepted me as an intern, like I watched The Devil Wears Prada. You, you guys know that movie, right? And and I was like, okay, prepare yourself. This is what it's gonna be like to be an intern. You're gonna be getting coffee. You're gonna get yelled at. They're gonna fucking hate you, but you're gonna work your way up the ranks. And then I met Brian in person, and I just felt his amazing aura. And I was like, oh my god, it's not like the movies. Like, he's absolutely amazing. And I knew in my gut at that moment that this was the first moment of something very special. Thank you for everything you've given me. I can't express in this 30 second clip <laughs> about how much you mean to me and everything you have taught me and how much your energy has affected me and millions of people. Thank you for everything that you do and this is just the fucking beginning. Amen. Like in three years, we're gonna take the shit out of the stratosphere and this whole fucking lobby is going to be filled and I'm gonna be the head bitch in charge at the riot. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for being here, for being the founding fathers and sisters and brothers and uncles and cousins. We love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. And thank you for Brian. This is the cup. Wow. Have you seen this eclectic group of people you have brought together? From every walk of life, every color, every heart, every sexuality, you have brought the entire pot of gold together in New York City. You believed in your dream. We talked about it four years ago. You created it. You made it happen. I am so honored, delighted, proud. I am truly amazed at the man you're becoming, the man you're going to be, and the man that's going to actually help change the world. And I really believe that with all my heart. Um, happy birthday is only the beginning. Thanks to your mom and dad for bringing you into this world on this day today for all of us. Because they created what do you think, Tom? Did they create something good? Yes, they did. They did, didn't they? <laughs> they created a couple of good things. We agree. And you know what? I love your family. Such love. You are a reflection of them. Thank you for introducing me to your family. 
Thank you for letting me know them because you truly are a shadow of all of them as well. They are bright, wonderful, they shine. And today is your birthday. Today is the day that you celebrate for the next year to come. And that next year to come, it is gonna be so damn magical. And we're gonna all make a bet here. Next year, this time, on this day, you're gonna be here. I don't care where you're gonna be in the world, you make sure you're here this day, next year, at this bar, at this table. Got it? Now, you always know there's one thing I do that's really good. Hold on. You ready? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. There you go, Brian. There, Mr. Brian.